me single one of you have a face long like a baboon body. When Mrs. Ho is upset, boy, can she cast. You can always tell which of the residents will live the longest. I think Mrs. Hall will be with us for a while. Her son stopped taking her for trips out. She embarrasses him in public, cussing off strangers. <laughs> when I see her in the mornings, I think of Grandma. Not because they're alike, but because they are exactly each other's opposites. <laughs> when I started managing care homes 10 years ago, you'd have plenty English residents. Some Irish, but now, of course, everyone's from everywhere. But back then, very few of the residents were black. It just wasn't done. As a kid, I spent a lot of time in care homes. Grandma took on every shift going. Even in our days off, if they were short staff, she'd go in and help feed at meal times. But Grandma, I'd say, you're the head chef. Why do you have to? She'd just look at me. It took me a long time to understand it, but she loved those residents. Loved spending time with them, even on Christmas Day. When she took over from the old cook, some of the residents threatened to go on hunger strike. No black bastards touching my dinner! Or, well, you never know what they might put in it. With all that hawkers spark as they get up to. Well, they weren't wrong. <laughs> she used salt and pepper for a start. <laughs> My favourite home was this really posh one in Hampstead because it had a piano. A real piano with all the keys still attached. I couldn't play a tune, but I loved torturing those residents, watching them stuck in their chairs, giving me their full zombified attention. <laughs> one day, one of the lively ones pointed at me with a knobbly, wand-like finger. Is that your mum? No. That's my gran. Oh. Your mum at work, is she? No, I said. My mum's dead. Oh, God, she said. That's awful. Imagine dying and leaving you with that old bitch. Well, I don't quite know how my grandma saw it coming, but as I swung back my right foot, ready to make contact with that old woman shin, grandma scooped me up. You're coming in the kitchen with me, young lady. Well, I prepared myself for a pollocking. But she used her bedtime voice. The one she used to tell me stories about a Nancy. She spoke about forgiveness and compassion. She said that in an hour's time, that woman would have forgotten what she said. But if I had kicked her, then that kind of hurt would last for days. You and me, we have each other to help us forget. But that woman, she don't have no one. When the first letter came, I was at work. Have you got your glasses on? And it's definitely addressed to you. OK, oh, look, stop fretting. It's a computer error, clearly. Look, Grandma, you can't get any more British than you. You recite Wordsworth, drink loose leaf tea and snack on McVitie's for crying out loud. I am taking it seriously. It's a mistake. It took two hours to calm her down. That's not what did it. What did it was the second letter, six weeks later. Everything 
in here, she bought with her hard-earned cash. She didn't believe in credit cards. That was the devil's currency. Even after the accident happened at work, she'd gone in on a lunchtime when she should have been off, was carrying a tray, and one of the residents tripped her up. So she ended up on disability allowance, even claiming that she hated. So when she read the second letter, HMRC written on the top, and those figures, those ominous numbers written in bold next to her name, Mrs. Carmen Lewis, you're to pay back 40,000 pounds in overpaid benefits, blah, blah. You're not entitled to as a non-British citizen, blah, blah. Well, her heart couldn't take it. She used to pile her letters up on the coffee table. The most important ones she'd leave in the mouth of the fish for my attention. She didn't make it to the table. When I found her, she was lying on the floor, her mouth wide open. I lost my voice for a week. I've had this invitation a few days now to Westminster Abbey. <laughs> a celebration of the contribution the Windrush generation made to post-war Britain. A letter Grandma would have loved. The girls at work had persuaded me to go for Grandma. Got a plus one. I've accepted. I'm taking Mrs. Hall. <laughs>